tonight on the final play. Here's Breeze, well protected, going to throw, and it's bobbled, but then caught, caught by Kamara, and he goes into he the end it. zone. The Saints wait until late to make it eight straight. Once we got to OT, you know, we, I think we felt like, man, the momentum was on our side, and we're going to go win this thing. We've got more reaction from the team, and Jim Henderson, fresh off the call of another wild Washington comeback. Might be the most incredible finish I've ever seen for the Saints. Largest comeback in Saints history in the fourth quarter. Plus... Oh! Nichols headlines an exciting weekend of college and high school football, while the Pelicans get a pleasant prognosis on the injury front. You won't want to miss the final play, so please stay in your seats. From Fox State Sports, this is the final play. Sponsored by your Southern Quality Ford dealer, built for tough, and Nissan. Welcome into the final play. I'm Juan Kincaid, and the win streak is now eight straight games for the Saints. Who knew that letting Robert Meacham lead the Houdat chant would be a sign of good things to come? More on that in a bit, but what a game for the black and gold as they snap the four-game dome losing streak to Washington. Sean Vazan recaps a wild day on Poitras Street. Sometimes the wins are dominant, like last week in Buffalo. Other times... Wins can be nail biters, like today inside the Mercedes Benz Superdome, when the Saints, down 15 points with three minutes left in the game, somehow managed to come back to beat Washington 34 to 31 in overtime. Now they've won eight in a row and are eight and two atop the NFC South. When you have wins like this, you, you it's the it's the number one thing you'll miss when when you're finished playing or finished coaching is you know the, the excitement of you know getting one maybe that. Didn't think you, you know you were gonna get where do we begin how about the beginning where the Saints start was less than stellar Drew Brees opened the game with an interception while the defense lost rookie sensation Marshawn Lattimore on their first drive with an ankle injury there were certain things we wanted to do and, and we, we tried to do them and, and yet there's you know it's like our game today when, you, when you're down some players and Washington was down some players as well and you just have to adjust it took some time for that adjustment to kick in as Kirk Cousins shredded the Saints early. He was 10 of 14 for 139 yards and a touchdown in the first half alone. His skins took a 17-13 lead into the locker room. The start of the second half wasn't much better. Washington caught the Saints sleeping with a fake punt deep in their own territory, which led to a Cousins touchdown pass to Ryan Grant, who was all alone. We turned a guy loose twice. Like, when I say lose, like... No one else around him lose. Later, when Cousins hit Jeremy Sprinkle for a seven-yard touchdown, it made the score 31-16 with six minutes left. At that point, it looked like the Saints' seven-game win streak was not going to make it to eight. Go, 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 go. But then something clicked, and old faithful Drew Brees took over. He didn't throw another incompletion the rest of the game and tossed two touchdowns, one to Josh Hill to cut the score to 31-23, then another to Alvin Kamara, who bobbled, then caught the ball and weaved his way into the end zone to bring the score to 31-29. Bobbled it a little bit, took my eyes off of it, but it bounced right in front of me and, and found a way to catch it. I was like, if I got to take a hit, I got to take it. Luckily, they wasn't trying to tackle me, and I got in there. <laughs> On the two-point conversion, they went right back to 41, who turned the corner to tie the score. My only concern with the play is in a competitive period Friday with our defense, we ran it against them and they played it correctly and, and you know, basically stopped it. And now you were just counting on the look that you saw in film. It was just, hey, this, this is, here are the three options and, and we ended up going with, the, fortunately, the one that worked. But still, Washington didn't go away and marched all the way down to the Saints' 34-yard line. But while in field goal range, Kirk Cousins was flagged for intentional grounding. After a Bond Bell sack on the next play, the game went into overtime. Once in overtime, there was little doubt. The defense forced a three and out. And after two explosive Mark Ingram runs of 20 and 31 yards, Sean Payton called on Will Lutz to finish the job from 28 yards out. Lutz came through and sent them to 8-2. and two. In dramatic fashion. Every one of these games is a confident booster. Um, our coach told us, you know, we hadn't been in a close game yet. We'd love, he'd love to see how we responded. Um, clearly, 
you know, going fourth quarter and we're down by 15 points. That's that's hard to overcome in this league. And not only did we come overcome it, we we made it one of our strengths. We we some dogs. <laughs> Resilient. We some dogs, man. Like no matter what happens, no matter what is going on in the game, we we got faith in each it's other. We, it's we, really we got, savage. Bro, that's savage. what it is. It's savage. Boom. We haven't encountered a game like this in a while, and uh, it was great to watch the team rally, come together. Uh, defense come up with the stops that they need to come up with. Offense coming up with the points when we needed to. Special teams, uh, the game-winning field goal. Uh, these are these are wins that you can just build on, build on. Man, and you develop confidence, and you understand that man. That the games only get tougher. They only get magnified with, in their with their importance, and you just realize that well, we can win. We can win anywhere, anytime, um, no matter what the circumstance. Joined now by the voice of the Saints, Jim Henderson. And Jim, I was all ready to have a perfect line set up for you. I was going to say, today was the difference between a desperate team and a comfortable team with the way Washington came out. And they were up 31-16 with six minutes left. We thought the game was over. We thought, okay, this is the lesson they need to learn. Lo and behold, they had some magic left. They win a close game, 34-31. I would have bought into exactly what <laughs> you were saying because it looked like a team in the Saints that was ready to get beaten. The streak was over after seven games. Okay, uh, start again against the Rams next week. Washington, a desperate team that has played good against, uh, against uh, tough teams, especially on the road. It looked like their day. Uh, they were ready to win a, a big game for them, probably a must game for them, and yet the Saints found a way to win it in the final six minutes. It's probably one of the most incredible finishes I've ever seen. Might be the most incredible finish I've ever seen for the Saints. Largest comeback in Saints history in the fourth quarter. Man, it was all kind of all kind of storylines we can go with this one. Why don't we start with the start? Because um, Drew throws an interception first play. They lose more uh, first drive. They lose Marshall and Lattimore. Um, and then it was, there was some moments where there was just kind of a, a lack of focus on certain game time, complimentary football, situational football type situations. First three and a half quarters of that game, man, they just, they looked like a team that was ready to get whipped. Yeah, and they were a team that was getting whipped physically. I mean, Bre uh, Breeze was hit a lot. They weren't getting to Cousins at all. He had all the time in the world. But then everything changed when the game got on the line. Breeze uh, rose to the occasion. He was 11 of 11 for 164 yards in his last two possessions. Mark Ingram ran like a man possessed. Alvin Kamara is as special as they come. What he did uh, in, in late in the game and to send the game into overtime was just incredible. And so it's the kind of victory that, and they all said it afterwards, you can truly build off because this was a game the Saints easily could have packed it in, mm -hmm. as most of us did, I think, <laughs> uh, midway through the, with six minutes left in the fourth quarter. So huge win. So Drew takes over, as they say, big time players make big time plays in big time situation. Turns out he's pretty good. Um, <laughs> I mean, even when you see the, 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 them take over with six minutes left, I mean, do you as a, did you feel any any sort of comeback in them at that point? Because I really didn't at that point. I would agree with it. No, <laughs> I didn't. I, th I thought it was pretty much over. Uh, the, the big play in the game, though, was Kirk Cousins, the uh, intentional grounding call. They're in a position to win the game with a field goal, and then he throws it to no one, gets the intentional grounding and the 10-second runoff and gave the Saints an opportunity to win in overtime. And we said before the game, one of my keys was, was, was to clamp down on special teams. They had decent punt returns today, and, and other than the, the, the fake punt, which I think they, they kind of caught the Saints sleeping, that was, that was a pretty gutsy call by, by Gruden, by the way. Um, and then Lust with the big field goals, he, he hits the 52-yarder, hits the one at the end there. I thought special teams-wise, um, they came through when they needed it. Well, they brought in Mike Westhoff this week to do exactly that, to light a fire under the special teams, and for the most part, they did. Uh, they played a lot better on special teams, and we had said before, eventually this team was going to have to have special teams win for them. Now, a field goal that's that short by Lutz is not exactly um, a play of the century. But the fact that the special teams came through when they needed to, they finally got the complimentary football that they had to have. They'd won with offense, they'd won with defense, they won with both together in Buffalo last week. They really hadn't been tested. As Sean said, they didn't really had to do a two-minute drill at the end of the game, and they did it flawlessly. Uh, they didn't really have to have a, a clutch field goal after a two-minute drive uh, to, uh, to win the game. They had to have it today, and they got it. So the things they needed to have to win, they got under the most trying of circumstances late in the game. I think we've all shifted. By the way, where they have clinched a non-losing season. That's great. They'll, they'll break that stretch. Yeah. We're on 8-2 right now. Okay. I think they're going to go a little further than that. But uh, I think we've all turned the page. We're all believers in this team right now. But this kind of win, I mean, Robert Meacham was here today. And, you know, it's it, the, the Meacham miracle back in 09. Today they played Washington. Uh, 
I don't know. I'm, st I'm starting to really feel, you know, the, 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 you can call it the DNA, you can call it the, the, the juju, the magic, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm starting to feel it with this team. You know, I think Drew Brees does too. You could see in his post-game press conference, he was asked about 09 and the Meacham thing, and he wanted to reference it, how much this kind of feels like that, and he's looking for ways that's different. Well, this team is a, a lot younger, younger than right, that right. one. But they're winning in the same kind of way, uh, building confidence with each victory, will, winning with certain areas of the team contributing, winning at clutch time, uh, winning uh, out physicality, uh, out physicaling a, a team like they did last week in Buffalo. Today, they won in a way that they hadn't had to win before, and they did it. And I'm not sure they deserved it. Sean Payton even kind of acknowledged it afterwards, but hey, they all count the same. Saints are 8-2, first place in the NFC South. What a great week. Jim, great thanks. Week. thanks. And of course, Jim has a very busy Monday beginning 8 a.m. with Black and Gold Rewind. 5 p.m. is commentary. 10.35, the Black and Gold Review Show. Make sure you submit your questions via the final word feature on the Final Play app. Coming up, Chris Hagan continues our Saints coverage from the Dome, taking a closer look at the Black and Gold's final two drives in regulation. How'd they do it to force overtime where they'd eventually get the win? That's next on the Final Play. Our catch of the week is a no-brainer and had a real circus feel to it. On the Saints' final regulation drive for the tying score, Alvin Kamara caught this Drew Brees throw not once, but twice and managed to get into the end zone. That catch is Fox 8's catch of the week. And it was that kind of play that capped off an amazing final two minutes for the Saints' offense. But we've bared witness to this type of game-changing play before, especially from the Saints when they face Washington. Chris Hagan takes a look back and then spins it full. Robert Meacham had one of the most iconic plays of the Saints Super Bowl season en route to an overtime win in Washington. Ironically, he was here today. Now, that game could have company as one of the most memorable black and gold wins of all time, thanks to two unbelievable drives to end regulation. We knew it was an uphill battle there, down 15 points, um, you know, starting that drive with five and a half minutes left. But When you come into the huddle, you hear Drew say, all right, here we go. That's yep. what you know, like, all yep. right, it's about to be some, it's some magic. Man, he draws stuff in the dirt, he's like, uh, uh, go, go beat him, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? So straight up. That man is amazing. The irony of the victory is that on the Saints' current win streak, they haven't seen too many pressure situations, let alone come from behind situations at all. And they certainly haven't had to put a win on Drew Brees' shoulders like they did today. But just in case you were doubting him, number nine proved once again why he's a future Hall of Famer. He loves those type of moments. He, he wants to be in those moments where he could, he could put the icing on the cake and he could, he could seal the deal. He wants to put the team on his back. Breeze was 11 for 11 and perfect when he needed to be. And part of what made it so remarkable is the way they drove the field so quickly twice. Four different players caught passes in the final two drives of regulation, including Kobe Fleener, whose five catches for 90 yards on the day all came in the final six minutes of the game. On that last drive, the, uh, the one where he, you know, defensive end dropped with him and, you know, took it up the sideline for a, for a nice game. Um, yeah, he came through when we needed him to come through, no doubt. And after the touchdown to get the Saints within two, the execution on a pressure-packed two-point conversion was flawless. My only concern with the play is in a competitive period Friday with our defense, we ran it against them and they played it correctly. And the only reason they shut it down is because they saw it. <laughs> they saw us walk through it. <laughs> so listen, we had confidence in the play. We, we felt like it was going to work. Um, and. Um, it was obviously we needed it. <laughs> we had to have it. What a rookie the Saints have found in this guy. If you didn't feel the magic before, you certainly do now. Reporting on the Saints, I'm Chris Hagan for the final play. Up next for the Saints, a trip to the left coast to face the Los Angeles Rams, who, by the way, struggled in Minnesota today. Latavius Murray had a couple of touchdown runs, and Adam Thielen turned a short completion from Case Keenum into a 65-yard score as the Vikings won a matchup of division leaders 24-7. They're now 8-2, while the Rams fall to 7-3.
Much more Saints talk on deck for Jim Henderson's Black and Gold Review show tomorrow night, as well as on Thursday's game plan, both those shows at 1035. Friday night's high school time as Sean Bazan and Chris Hagan bring you playoff highlights from across the area. On Sunday, the game day routine, tailgate at 10 a.m., kickoff at noon, recap and reaction Sunday night right here on the final play. Still to come on the final play, it was another winning weekend for our college football team. LSU survived the monsoon. Tulane kept its ball hopes alive, and both Nichols and Southeastern were big winners as well in entirely different ways. We'll recap it all when the final play continues. play LSU's win in Tennessee on Saturday was convincing but it wasn't pretty in fact only the weather at Rocky Top was uglier LSU led this game at the half 17 10 and then the skies just opened and the monsoon ensued when the two teams came out onto the field in the second half the conditions had changed it was barely visible and the Tigers had to change how they played the game they gave the ball more to Darius Geis and he responded 97 yards and a touchdown, becoming just the fifth LSU Tiger with multiple 1,000-yard rushing seasons. 30 to 10 was the final score, but all the players could talk about after the game was the crazy weather. Man, when I walked out that tunnel from halftime, I almost didn't run out on the field. <laughs> Basically, it was backyard football. You know, up in North Louisiana, we get a lot of weather like that, you know, a little rain and stuff. And, you know, growing up, we always played football outside. So, I mean, for me, it wasn't nothing new. It just kind of happened. It was extremely windy. It was swirling. Uh, uh, we, we had a, a different game plan going in, but once we saw the kind of conditions, we kind of had to adjust. I thought our guys were ready to go, and then uh, and the storm hit. But I thought the storm fired them up, like you said. It was... Uh, like little kids playing in the backyard, so I was proud of them. Meanwhile, Tulane played like a team that understands what it'll take to make a bowl game this season. They have to win their final two games, and the Greenies didn't disappoint on senior day at Yeoman Stadium. Chris Hagan has more. Considering the level of their opponent and what was at stake for Tulane's season, it's not hard to see where this win ranks in Willie Fritz's young tenure uptown. It might be the best one, I'm guessing. I don't know, but it was, uh, you know, we needed a win like that as well. We, we've had some tough luck this season, and, uh, you know, just uh, uh, happy for the seniors, happy for all the guys, and, and it was a hard-fought win. It really was. While it's the heroics of Jonathan Banks' late touchdown pass to Taryn Ancolod that will be remembered most, it's the Green Wave defense that held the game in check when it easily could have gotten out of hand early. And we didn't start real good. We didn't uh, first half or the second half. You know, we gave up some big plays in between the 20s, but we we, we really uh, rose to the occasion with some big plays in, in the red zone and you know made, made field goals or stops, you know, which were huge for us. Now it sets the Green Wave up with an even bigger matchup next week. We can't get too happy over the Houston game. We got to come pre prepare for um, SMU because, you know, if we don't win this game, we're not bowl eligible. So uh, we got to do a good job of, you know, preparation this week. While the bigger picture with the win was keeping their bowl game hopes alive, the Green Wave were also playing for their seniors to get them one last win in Yulman Stadium. We wanted to send those guys with the win, those seniors. They mean a lot to us. Came and changed the program. Coach Fritz. And Coach, Coach Ruse, they helped us on offense this week. We had, a, we had a great preparation, great execution. Just came out, made plays. To finish my last home game with a, with a win like we did, just kind of fighting and, and making it happen is, is big, and it was fun. Reporting on the Green Wave, I'm Chris Hagan for the final play. Celebrations in Thibodeau because Nickel State has been rewarded for a fantastic season. The Colonels are in the FCS playoffs 
which began on Saturday, and they'll host South Dakota. Nichols is one of three Southland teams to get in, with Central Arkansas and Sam Houston State joining them. It's going to be a special place on Saturday where we were undefeated at home, and we're trying to go for win number six. Nichols' first tournament appearance since 2005 came despite them losing Thursday night's Riverbell Classic at Southeastern. The Colonels led most of this game, but the Lions came storming back in the third quarter, turning a 17-7 deficit around with their running game, getting a couple of scores from their running backs, Marcus Cooper and Juwan petit Frere. The Lions had 267 yards rushing as the home team won this game for the first time in four years. 21-17 was your final score. Actually, the beauty of this game, the last three years has come down to, you know, whatever, two Hail Marys and a field goal with no time on the clock. You know what I mean? That's, I don't know if you can wish for a better rivalry. you got to give it all to the seniors. We, that's probably the last time they're going to step on the field ever again. So we, just had to, we had to give it all for them. Meanwhile, tomorrow is the beginning of a big week for Southern and Grambling. It's Bayou Classic Week, the 44th annual matchup between these two teams. And for the second straight season, the SWAC Western Division title will be up for grabs in the Superdome. And this should be an offensive explosion as the Tigers have the league's second best offense, averaging 32 points per game. The Jags, not too shabby, they're fourth in the league, putting up 28 per contest. By the way, Grambling won this game last year, 52 to 30. Up next on the final play, we'll take a quick look back at the best of prep football's week 12. And the Pelicans got some much needed good news regarding the health of Anthony Davis. We'll have that next. Our high school football play of the week takes us to De La Salle's 52-14 quarterfinal win over Hannon. Kendall Collins, fourth touchdown of the night, was special. A juke and some power he put on a show as the Cavs rolled into the semifinal. And here are our player of the week nominees. Hanville's Puka Williams, 303 yards rushing, three touchdowns, and the Tigers went over Ruston. De La Salle's Kendall Collins, 142 yards rushing, and the four touchdowns, and the Cavs went over Hannon. And Riverside quarterback Jordan Loving, Six touchdown throws in their win against Dunham. Voting runs Monday through Wednesday at fox8live.com slash player. And for more on the high school scene, head over to our Fox 8 News app or our website, fox8live.com, for highlights, recruiting, news, and our weekly power rankings. The Pelicans got some much-needed good news on Anthony Davis. He's expected to play tomorrow night against Oklahoma City. It was believed that A.D. suffered a concussion in Denver Friday night after taking a direct hit to his right orbit. He was held out for the rest of the game because of the league's concussion protocol, but after further evaluations back here in New Orleans, Davis has been cleared to play tomorrow night. As for the team itself, a better performance than what we saw against the Nuggets is necessary. With very little defensive resistance, the Nuggets scored at will. A league high this year, 146 points. The Pels have lost back-to-back -back games after winning back-to-back, -back, and they'll be back home for the next two games against OKC tomorrow night, and San Antonio comes to town on Wednesday. After that, it's two straight on the road at Phoenix on Friday, then the next night, Saturday, at Golden State. They'll come back to the Smoothie King Center on the 29th to face the Minnesota Timberwolves. And that is our show for tonight. For all of us here at Fox 8, I'm Juan Kincaid. We hope you join us again next Sunday night for the final play. From Fox 8 Sports, this has been the final play.